Okay, so when we're talking about structures in, and bodies, we have to have some very specific terms to describe where we are. And the terms are relative. So um, what we'll find is that unless we have a standardized set of words we can use to describe things, structures to each other, it's super confusing. So the directional terms that we're going to learn today, we're going to use every day. The first thing that is important is to know that homegirl here is in anatomical position. So take a look at her. Facing forward, chin up, hands. Look at the position of her hands. Her palms are facing forward. Her toes are facing forward. This is standard anatomical position. If you don't know, we tend to um, think about or talk about position of a person in relation to standard anatomical position. That's the first thing you need to know. The second thing you need to know is that all of these directional terms are relative. So let's look at our directional terms. I am frustrated. <laughs> I've been recording this freaking lecture since 5 a.m., and it's 9 a.m. now. This is not sustainable. All right. You have a list of directional terms with this lady to label. And let's look at these um, terms. First of all, anterior versus posterior. Anterior is front. Posterior is back, which uh, now I told you that these terms are relative. So if you, like, think about the position of your nose, like my nose is anterior to my sternum if I'm in standard anatomical position. However, my sternum is anterior to my vertebra if I'm in standard anatomical position. My sternum is posterior to the tip of my nose, and it's, um, my vertebrae are posterior to my sternum. My sternum is anterior to my vertebrae but posterior to my nose. The point is that my sternum was anterior and posterior. So it means absolutely nothing to tell me, oh, the sternum is anterior because it's anterior to what? The sternum is actually posterior to, like, skin. It's behind the skin. There's another term that we have for that. In fact, I'm going to give it to you right now. Um, my other term is superficial versus deep. I might throw away this little tablet. Like, throw it away. Garbage. It makes me cranky. Superficial versus deep. Superficial is closer to the surface of the body. Deep is beneath that. If we're talking superficial and deep, we're actually talking about sticking a pin in something. If I take a pin, this is a lovely thought, and I stick a pin in my chest right here, the end of the pin, the little bobble thing of the pin, is superficial to the tip of the pin, which is deep. Does that make sense? You could use posterior, anterior, or superficial deep to describe um, the same structures. It's relative. Okay, um, this one also relative. In standard anatomical position, the head is always superior to anything below it, to the toes. The toes are inferior to the head. The knees are superior to the toes but inferior to the head. It's all relative. Um, medial 
and lateral refer to the midline. Things that are closer to the midline are medial. Things that are farther away from the midline are lateral. So my sternum is medial to um, my shoulder. My, my sternum is sort of always medial because it's totally right on the midline. Um, my pectoralis major, I had to think about that one for a minute. Pectoralis major is lateral to my sternum, but it is medial to my shoulder. So again, relative terms. We did deep and superficial. Proximal and distal, focus. Proximal is closer to an attachment point for a limb. It's probably safe to use proximal and distal to only describe a position on a limb, on a leg or an arm. And there, there, are, there will be exceptions to that, but for the most part, if you compartmentalize and say, okay, proximal and distal, I'm only going to use those terms to describe um, limbs, you'll be super safe in that. Come up with another word to describe everything else. Proximal is closer to the joint, to the attachment point. Distal is farther away. Distal is distant to that attachment point. All right, that, those are, oh, one more. Those are all of our um, anatomical terms for relative position, but something else that we're going to see frequently is the term supine, the term za, supine versus prone. Supine, okay, I'm going to give you a hint because I got it wrong on YouTube uh, last time I recorded this lecture. Supine has the word up in it, which means if you are supine, you're lying on the floor face up. Prone is not supine. And so if you are lying prone on the floor, you are face down. Our cadavers, when we start working with them, they will be either supine or prone. We can flip them. But knowing and having, being able to talk about, oh, is George supine today? George, no, George is prone. Esther is supine. Awesome. We will have um, those conversations. Okay, get comfortable, man, because we are going to be doing this every day. Bye-bye.